Um, it's interesting, Ian's kind of pitch at the start was really testament to why we're here, actually. We, we do share quite a lot, and I'm, I'm glad those stats uh, came up because, it, coincidentally, it kind of ties in, so that's very good. Um, this is us, Curzon Home Cinema. Um, this, this, what you see here, is actually a film of ours that we released next year. It's not out yet. Um, from Taylor Tales, it's a, a futuristic um, fantasy drama. Um, Salma Hayek and Jim Riley, they're staring back at you. Um, I put that up just actually to give you an experience of what we're trying to do. We're a cinema company, and, and digital's amazing. It's a really good enabler, and that's the testament to why we're here. We're a cinema company, yet we're at this developer digital forum. Pretty cool. Anyway, um, we'll carry on and we'll go, but I just wanted to say this, this is what we do, and I'm just going to give you a little insight of Curzon, Curzon Home Cinema, and then kind of lead you into um, Bill, who's going to show you some bit more um, belts and braces of, of how we did it. Um, and then I'm going to jump back on just before lunch and before you all tweet um, to just say uh, what kind of marketing we do. Because some of the, again, some of the points that Ian made, which were really, really kind of relevant about Amazon and tagging tag the Amazon store and whatnot, um, we actually do that in our cinemas across this country. Um, and we do that in a very, very concise way. We are the only physical and digital play that exists in this market, apart from a few public bodies. That's really different. I'll leave that. Here we are. A um, couple of seats and a projector. That's what we do. A um, couple of seats and a projector, but actually, we have an 80-year history of doing this. Um, the venue you just see here is actually Bloomsbury. It's not so far from here. Um, it reopened in May. It cost us £4 million uh, sterling. That was built upon an idea of, uh, who, for all you cineasts out there, um, Andre um, Tarkovsky. He built um, his kind of ethos around the kind of Soviet uh, film industry, and it was about the post-apocalyptic industrial ethos. Um, that's what that venue is. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but outside it's a lot of concrete and it looks like the end of the world. Um, but everything is about curation. It's supposed to be a sanctuary. When you go into this venue, we all talk about curation. We don't just talk about putting films up and in a certain order or adverts. It's about everything. It's about everything we do. Going from the food and beverage offer, it's all been chosen for that location. The programming's been chosen, but the site has been designed by a different designer in every location. So this one is in the center of London. Everything is gray on gray. And if I tried doing that at home, I know my wife would think I'm mental. Um, but it's about the focus is just the white screen, like here. We're innovators, we're disruptors, and what we do is we question the, the norm. And that makes us kind of pioneer in this market. And what we're allowed to do is to do something different. And that's because of this a few little blobs. And a few little blobs are the value chain. The value chain for us in the film world is content financing. We finance our own um, production sometimes, but we also acquire films for distribution. The distribution bit allows us to do various different things, so we can actually f finance and own and distribute to ourselves and to our other partners in the cinema world, but also in the digital world. This fusion bit is a DVD business, which is, is kind of uh, an old aging thing. And here, we own the, the end consumer engagement. The consumer engagement's the real cool bit, and there's, there's similarities to Amazon, definitely, um, uh, from going from being a traditional retailer of, of, of bricks and mortar to a digital retailer, the reach of the virtual venue, as we call it, is much, much, much greater, and uh, we could disseminate information a lot quicker than just uh, the bricks and mortar plays. So just a little bit more uh, about Curzon Home Cinema. We are not a vanilla VOD platform. A vanilla VOD platform is classic Netflix et al. Click and play, ca cater for everyone's likes and dislikes. Uh -uh. That's not us. Um, we, we don't want to compete in that world. It's too expensive. We're not a billion dollar company. We're privately owned. We're a privately owned independent cinema group with a digital business. And what does that allow us to do? That allows us to play with customers in a very, very different way. So we've been existing for five years in, in digital form. And that was kind of a beta format. We were waiting until the, the market was right. Um, the market is right now. And going back in early 13, 2013, we decided to press the button on taking it out of beta format and completely redesign. And in doing so, we partnered with Easel TV here in, in the UK. 
And what we did was create something truly unique. We had a complete new uh, cloud-based platform, um, which Bill will touch on, but we also built a new HTML5 app. That allowed us to do many, many different things, and Fire TV was certainly one of them. Um, we only have 650 titles. You might think, wow, that's, that's not a lot. That's, pretty, that's almost one, uh, one per person in this uh, conference. Um, yeah, but actually, there's a market for this. If you look across the spectrum of what's out there in the now, there's a whole big media group, Sky, Virgin, um, certainly then we have Netflix and now Amazon. But we're over here, and we're dealing with uh, a cineast, loyal, engaged. The demographic profile is very, very in fit into um, Amazon's profile. And we know there's a market for this. We're not stuck in the middle of the bell curve uh, and, and not talking to anyone. Um, so that's really from where we come from. But the interesting bit here is 80 years of history. Curzon Cinemas has been existing for 80 years. So it's a traditional business. We started showing films in, in Curzon Street in Mayfair, the Curzon, the first. And we've expanded now to 12 sites and seven partner sites across the country. We're building two to three new cinemas a year, as well as aggressively rolling out our platform to over six and a, well, 6.7 million, actually, uh, digital homes. And that is, we don't just go on all devices and hope we're on every device. We only partner with people we partner with for a reason. We've selected them, extending the curational story, but also we don't want to be just everywhere. It's an expensive business to be in for, for a small person like us to maintain that. We don't have the in-house developing skills, and that's why we had to outsource the bills company. But isn't this great? We can do that. And the ease of which, the speed in which we can do these things um, is testament to this industry and how cool that is we can basically put a cinema in everyone's house. And what we're trying to do is enable uh, day and date releasing. W may I just do a quick little uh, litmus test, it's not, nothing scientific and certainly not official. Um, can I just have a show of hands of all those people who've been to the cinema in the last sort of four weeks? That's great, the industry is not dead. And can I have a show of hands of all those people that would have gone if they didn't have kids, work, life? <laughs> that's, that's my market and that's our market and as a company we're pioneering day and date film releasing it's very difficult but if we kind of jump back a few slides that value chain allows us we don't want to get rid of the theatrical window completely absolutely not we are a cinema company by trade. We believe in the theatrical window. We just believe in squishing it a little. So, um, quickly moving on. Um, I was asked by the Fire TV team <laughs> to uh, explain why it happened. Why was it that a cinema company appeared on Fire TV? Um, well, first and foremost, um, business development. It started from a few conversations with the London-based team, and which, by the way, was very handy. I think it would have been a very difficult discussion from S Seattle to uh, Holborn here. Um, it was really efficient. We started from a, a seeding conversation with them, exploring some options. I was on holiday, um, pulling my two-year-old out of the sand, and we closed the deal. <laughs> It was that quick, it was that efficient, and that, you know, there was a lot of bits in between. But from that point to when Bill's team made the app and completed it and submitted it, I think it was less than six weeks. It was pretty, pretty and so we, we had it submitted before the pre-launch of the original Fire TV back in October 14, and in September it was all done. Obviously, the, I say that because that was my bit, but Bill's bit was a little bit more stressful. Um, but from us, it was that innovative approach. Do you know what? We've got something kind of cool here. We've got something a bit different. This is really complementary to what Amazon want to do. It isn't anything that's going to cause any problems. But also, it's something that really stands out. So yeah, next bit was brand. Um, again, I was really fortunate Ian's slides really kind of uh, put this home. The quality nature of what Amazon do is very in fit in what we do. We're not. Uh, high-end and niche we're actually just a quality film environment we want to put the venue and the experience back into the lead of the conversation so instead of oh I went to watch um, spider-man in the cinema I went to the Curzon to watch spider-man it's that venue stake that we want to bring back so we want to bring that to the digital world now that's the difficult bit designing something which we heard some interesting pieces about um, we complement each other very very much um, 
interestingly enough, our use of uh, materials, our use and access to content and talent and Q&As and premieres at our various sites across London all comes into play because Amazon is included in our venues. And a lot of the customers, around a million people that come through the footfall, see that. Oh, I clicked twice. Demographic. Um, we're 25 to 65, ABC1. That's the coincidence bit. That was exactly on par with uh, several of the devices that Ian showed at the start. It's an. Hello? Yeah. Last chance, and then I'm off. I've got a deep voice, don't worry. Um, and and, and the, the natural piece about this, we, we have an audience. We have an audience that are digital savvy. We have an audience that are very engaged and want to have more engagement with content. What does that mean? Um, well, that fits very much with the great ecosystem in UI that Amazon have built because there was a natural fit. And I think the team, the business development team here in London and, and ourselves, we recognize that from the start. There was that natural fit. Um, this is the bit which Bill will talk about. We, we have a HTML5 app, and that was ported to the Android platform in, in Amazon's world uh, very easily. Um, coincidentally, and it wasn't before that, um, we use Amazon World Servers to actually deliver all our content. Um, and Bill's team, and, and, and uh, with, with a little bit of help of the Amazon payment process, it's very quick, it's very easy, and we're able to get customers to buy content, engage with content. And in the kind of Salma Hayek picture at the back, we are a big screen experience. And try to put that on a TV or on, on devices is really hard. But we, we are an advocate of the big screen. So we want people to lean back. We want people from that, I think it was 10, 10 foot of view. Um, that's what it's about. We want people to enjoy cinema at home. And so if someone can do it at relative ease, we actually will uh, be advocates of that. And the results. Um, I can't tell you any numbers. I'm actually not allowed to also. Um, Excellent device sales. I think you probably can guess the amount of advertising that's going on in the market right now. It's been testament and with Jeremy Clarkson coming on board with it. The device sales are going very, very strongly. Our growth has been uh, in the hundreds of percents each year on year. Um, Curse of Home Cinema has grown on multiple platforms. But our user base and our user base within Amazon uh, Fire has been really sticky. We're seeing a high retention rate. We're seeing a high return rate on a three day, seven day. Um, this is all great news. You think, well, why aren't you retiring onto an island? Um, yes, it's true, but it's just continuing. And I think we can keep farming that. And we can keep farming that experience and making sure our customers, and, and they might be of an older demographic, the Mayfair, Chelsea um, uh, bus crew, um, or it might be a regional. People don't get the chance to go to a cinema. They just plug these devices in, and all of a sudden they've got a cinema in their room. Isn't, how cool is that? So yeah, for us, actually the results have been testament to all of the sort of hard work that's been put into it, but also the success of the platform. So I'm just going to finish this bit off. Um, big screen experience on, on Fire TV. Well, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to replicate one of our lovely cinemas. Hello. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. And how do we put nice seats onto a device? And how do we make all of these uh, design points? Um, we can, or we'll try. So we have a very easy to use, lean back, in, engaged uh, UI, which is about to change very soon. We have a cinema experience. Everyone who opens up the app, and what you can see it downstairs. The, my team in, in London, we create a cinema trailer which gets shown in front of every film that we screen across the country. It's around 12 to 1400 screenings a week. Mandatory, we cross promote Curzon Home Cinema with the same trailer that you get when you enter the. So it's a theatrical trailer in an app. It's a little bit different, absolutely. But it's curating the day and date films that are out in, on the platform, et cetera. Metadata, I can't point as I'll come over. This metadata isn't uh, the same as what you'd get on another platform. It's our point of difference. I can be a small guy up against a big fish, or I can be a small guy that's totally different and become quite differentiated. Our metadata is effectively handwritten to our film. So if you see any film on our platform, on another platform, it will not be the same. The images are hand-picked. The metadata is handwritten. So that means you can search by actor, director, by country, and it's all curated by Curzon. And that's really different. So just some fun facts, if you're interested. 
Um, we are one of the top grossing apps in the UK, and that's been testament to probably we've been there from the very start and we've logged in people's minds, but also the content and the availability of the apps and the, and the variation of the apps is testament to the customer base, which is, again, pretty different. Um, we're available nationwide. We are actually available in, in UK and Ireland. Um, day and data curation, that's our USP and that's our ethos, and we keep hammering that home. We're not a please all everyone. We are something where someone comes and they know that they're going to get quality film that's been hand chosen for a reason. We have no algorithms. It's all humanly done. It probably goes against, sorry, the gaming bit. Um, but one thing that we are going to do, we are TVOD. We have a membership scheme in the cinema. You can become a member of Curzon Cinemas. You can go as much as you like or not. You can see James Bond in Dolby Atmos or not, as you wish. Um, but also, we're going to start bringing membership benefits to our service. So as a Curzon member, you can get extra membership benefits. So watch your space. Um, cloud pause and cross-device entitlement. Again, Bill will talk about that in, in a very second. That is something that's very different. We don't want to stop people staying on one device, but we also want to bring people to the device. And I'll kind of come back to you later and before you start tweeting away. Um, just to give you an idea about how we are working with Amazon and marketing Amazon at the, at the ground level and the physical venues. And finally, we've got something coming very soon. We're going to update the app. Yes, it's only been up there a year, um, but we, we do monitor the feedbacks on the Amazon store. I appreciate probably in a slightly different way to what Amazon does. But we do, and it's really important to notice the feedback from the customers, good and bad, and you know, we, we, we do try to write the good ones, but also the bad ones. Sometimes it's quite hard-hitting, and I probably take it a bit personally, but it, 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 it means that something needs to be addressed. Whether we can do anything about it, or we can timely do anything about it is another thing, but if it's something that we can fix, absolutely we will tackle it. And if it wasn't for that feedback loop on Amazon, we wouldn't get that. We'd just get a lot of customers that would badmouth us and we'd never see them. So, yeah, I really sort of, my, my kind of closing bit on this bit, take some, take some humbridge in what people are thinking about your product because it just allows you for the continuous improvement piece. And now over to Bill. So I'm hoping I'm not... Hopefully I won't need that other microphone. Morning, everybody. So I'm Bill Scott, I'm the COO of Easel TV. Uh, thank you, Phil. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we built the app and, uh, and how we operate this across multiple platforms. So uh, Easel TV, we're a software company. Our focus is on multi-screen video delivery. Uh, we work across a number of different platforms uh, on various different form factors, you know, whether it's set-top boxes, games, consoles, or TVs, uh, or, uh, or things like the Fire TV, of course. So we work with a variety of, of, uh, of content providers, people like Curzon Home Cinema, uh, but also broadcasters, uh, people that have got content, people that want to get that content out to the consumer. And uh, usually they want to monetize it, but we also do uh, branded content and things like that as well. So we work, uh, we provide an end-to-end -end solution. So we have a, a cloud-based software as a service platform that we call Suggested TV. That's what Curzon Home Cinema is based on. Uh, we also then provide the end-to-end -end service to implement all of the applications, to ingest all of the content, to process that content, protect it, and so on. So we do, uh, we do everything uh, for, uh, for Curzon Home Cinema from a technical point of view. So a little bit about the, uh, the Curzon Home Cinema project. Uh, so Phil has covered uh, uh, quite a lot of this, but I'm going to get into a little bit more detail on, on what we do. So we, uh, we, we target, obviously, desktop platforms, iOS, uh, FreeSat FreeTime, Set-Top Box, Samsung Smart TV, uh, the Amazon Fire TV and, and Fire TV Stick, uh, recently launched on, on Virgin Media TiVo as well, uh, with a range of, of other devices coming uh, over time. Uh, sorry, I'm a little out of date on the number of films there. Um, it's a, it's a pay-per-view offering, so we are basically charging people a, an amount for a 48-hour rental. Uh, you can watch it as many times as you like within that 48-hour period. And you can pay for that uh, with a credit card just by typing your number in, uh, or you can uh, use your Amazon in-app purchase, of course. Uh, and uh, there's also a, a, an e-wallet on, on some platforms as well. Uh, but I, as Phil mentioned, one of the, the really 
key things here, and, and I think other people have mentioned it as well, is to have a seamless experience across multiple platforms. So people should be able to, to buy the content on their Fire TV and then continue to watch it on their, on their iPad or, or whatever device they want to, uh, to continue on. So really important that you provide that seamless uh, experience, that you allow people to pause on, on one device and pick up on another device to continue, uh, to continue watching. So this is the, uh, the website, it's a responsive design website. Focus on, on big images, these, are all, uh, these images are all hand-picked by Curzon. It's the editorial value that Phil was talking about. This is a responsive design, it adapts for the different devices of course, um, but it's very different to the TV experience which we'll show in, in a moment. So this is some of the curation that, uh, that Phil was talking about. A lot of effort goes into choosing the different, uh, the different categories of films and uh, this has changed maybe two or three times a week. So if you come back on a frequent basis, you will always get a fresh experience. So collections, the Curzon team put a lot of effort into, uh, into the curation and creating different collections of films. Uh, so there'll be a, a director's favorite films cult films, that sort of thing, uh, or perhaps an, an actor or an, act or an actress uh, that will be featured. And here's, so here's a collection of Juliette Binoche films. The metadata that Phil was talking about. This is the mobile view. So it's the same, you know, the same information, obviously, everything is driven by the same content management system, but obviously appropriate for mobile devices. I'm now going to show you a, a video of the Fire TV user experience. So uh, we're, we're really pleased with the Fire TV because it's a very powerful device. It renders the user experience in a, in a really nice way. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm here today. Uh, that is a, a, genuine, a genuine differentiator of the Fire TV box. So the, the Curzon experience starts from the App Store. We go straight into full screen video. Uh, this is the, the showreel uh, that is, this is played in the, in the cinema before every screening of a film in a Curzon cinema. And it also uh, it is shown at the beginning of the home cinema experience. Curzon changed this every month. It includes a, a taster of the, sort of, uh, of, the, of the service as a whole, but also of the content that is going to uh, be featured on the, on the service uh, this month. So we, um, I'm skipping some of these things for, uh, for brevity's sake. So once we, um, once we finished with the with the showreel, uh, we're, we're we're now playing a sequence of trailers. So this is the televisual experience that's really important to something like Curzon Home Cinema. Uh, we're not trying to make an app experience on the TV. We're trying to make it more like a TV channel. So uh, very important to recognise the context of the device and the way that it's used. So uh, rather than just giving people a menu, uh, we, give them, uh, we give them trailers, we give them the full screen experience and that starts with the showreel. So having, uh, we can browse the trailers, we can just keep skipping trailers if we want. Uh, we obviously do have a menu as well. This is the featured, featured film. So if we, if we do nothing, we will we'll get this, uh, this playlist of featured content uh, and we can pick one of those to, uh, to play obviously. Uh, trailers are obviously a really good way to sell content. Uh, trailers have been used to sell content since uh, uh, since long before I was born, anyway, uh, and uh, it works. And therefore, we've applied that to the TV uh, and the Fire TV uh, box to deliver a, you know, a cinematic experience as well as a televisual experience. Very rich metadata, as as Phil was talking about. Uh, we have a lot of ways of accessing the same content. So we can go in and we can choose an actor. In this case, we're gonna choose uh, Nicolas Cage. We can see which of the films uh, that he's in that, that, that are available on the service. Uh, in this case, we're gonna pick uh, Joe. So again, we start from the, from the trailer, uh, but now we can start to interact with the Fire TV box and we're gonna decide to, uh, to watch this film and so we, we're now faced with the, with the purchasing process. And this is where we start. We leave our application and we go into the Amazon payment process. And it's very, very simple. You know, this isn't 
this is just the, the clicker for the thing, but it's, it's a similar kind of concept. It's just a very a few presses of the button uh, that allow you to make, the, uh, make you the, the purchase. So we're not, unfortunately, going to show you the whole of the film right now. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do it. So uh, we use our suggested TV platform, which is a cloud-based software as a service platform. Uh, the, the digital supply chain coming into that platform is a, from a collection of different places. We, we get digital content from the different distributors and their, in this case from their uh, supply chain partners. Uh, we ingest that content. Uh, Curzon at the same time will add all of the metadata uh, they'll set up the availability windows and the pricing. They can set different prices for different availability windows. Obviously, a film that is available in the cinema costs a little bit more than one that's been around for a while. Uh, so we, we set up those windows uh, and all of the, um, the, the curation around the, the content, the featuring of content, the promotion of content as well. So into the, into the cloud, we ingest the content. So we're in ingesting that, we're encoding that, we're encrypting it with uh, DRM, we're publishing that into a content delivery network. And of course, we're putting the metadata into our uh, suggested TV uh, content management system. All of, the, uh, all of the, the processing in our cloud system runs in Amazon Web Services. I'll talk a little bit more, more about that in a moment. Uh, but we're basically matching the metadata with the content. Uh, we're making sure that we've got everything we need in order to publish that product. So we're, we're basically managing the publishing of, of products along with the prices for that uh, product. We also uh, need to make sure that we have uh, a catalog of product prices that can be then published into the, into the, Amazon, uh, into the Amazon store. So uh, the, the cloud services are designed to do as much as possible of the, of the application functionality. And we do that because obviously we've got a number of different devices that we're targeting. So we want to get as much as possible into a common location so that we're not duplicating uh, a lot of functionality onto different devices. So we do all of, the, uh, all of the, the app functionality as far as we can is done in the cloud. Uh, all of the editorial controls, marketing promotions and so on uh, is done in the cloud. Also, all of the integration with third-party systems is done, again, as far as possible in the cloud. So all of the, the integration with, uh, with the different payment mechanisms, for example, including the Amazon in-app purchasing, that's all done uh, from the cloud. Of course, some of that happens on the device, uh, but we, we, track the, we track the purchases on the, uh, from the cloud. Uh, we also do the, the integration with, uh, with any other third-party systems, like uh, Curzon's uh, membership database is, is integrated from the, from the cloud as well. And then we have a series of device-optimized players. Uh, so we're working across a number of different, uh, a number of different devices, a number of different offer operating systems, a number of different browsers. Uh, but it's important to optimize each user experience for that device, uh, Fire TV included, uh, in order to make sure that you're getting the best out of that device, taking advantage of, of specific features. So how does the, the Fire TV application work? Well, we, we did this in two parts. The first part is a native Android application. And that provides the things that are unique to Fire TV. Uh, so we felt it was really important to, uh, to, to use the, the features of the Fire TV box as far as we could um, without having to rewrite our whole application. So we use the video player, key mapping with the remote control, of course, uh, the in-app purchase. Uh, those, those things are, are a key part of the, of the box. And th those things are delivered through the, uh, the native Android application. We then use Android WebView and uh, an HTML5, uh, a variant of our standard HTML5 application uh, that is, is pretty much unchanged from the other devices that it, that, that it works on, on, on smart TVs, on sets of boxes, and so on. Uh, we've got a number of different, uh, uh, we've got three or four different versions of this on, on different devices, but it's a single set of source code. Uh, and by making the combination between the native Android application and the HTML5 application, we were able to get the best of both worlds. So we got something that was optimized for the Fire TV box, 
took advantage of all the key features, of course, including the in-app purchase, which is really important. Uh, and uh, we were able to use the same, the same user experience, the same navigation as for, for other platforms. And, and this was really the only way that we were able to, uh, to get the application published in, in such a fast time as well. Outside of the application, we also we publish data into the uh, into the Amazon store. So we are publishing. We're actually publishing two different catalogs. Uh, one of the full price items, and one for the uh, discounted items for uh, for Curzon uh, for Curzon members. And obviously, search metadata comes from outside of the app as well. The whole cloud platform is based on AWS. I don't think I've got time to go through all of this, but uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's a lovely Amazon love in here today, isn't it? But we, you know, we we use the Amazon Web Services platform long before we had anything to do with Fire TV, uh, and it it just works. So uh, uh, that's a pretty key part of our our, our system as well. So our, our experience on the Fire TV box has been really very positive. Uh, we did we did have a challenge at the beginning to get the app live in a very uh, a very short period of time six weeks as Phil says uh, it's it's a you know, it's a fast box to use but it's also it was it, it was a very painless process to develop for we got excellent support from the Amazon team both in in London and uh, and in Seattle uh, and that that made it a much easier process than it has been on some of the other platforms that we have uh, targeted. Uh, the box itself is is great to take around for demos. We use that as our default demo uh, demo tool nowadays. Uh, we used to be taking around Blu-ray players and set-top boxes and things, uh, but they were always difficult to get connected. Whereas the Fire TV box, you just take it along, connect it, and it works. A few months later, we came uh, came to tackle the Fire TV stick, and we found that was a, uh, also quite a straightforward process. Uh, we did make a change to the video player at that point to uh, to use the on-stream, uh, the visual on player, uh, as that gave us better video performance on the Fire TV stick. Uh, but but basically, we run exactly the same application on the Fire TV stick as on the on the Fire TV box, and it's uh, uh, it's a pretty good experience. You know, Fire TV box itself is, is slightly better, of course, because it's got a better processor, uh, more memory, and so on. But uh, Fire TV stick still works very well and gives a good good experience for Curzon Home Cinema. Uh, and we're looking forward to to the new versions of these devices and the changes in the in the operating system, which will uh, allow us to do different things as well. So that's it for me. I'll hand you back to Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I um, cut my losses and went to third microphone, so hashtag three microphone fill. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to wrap this up. I have one minute, and I've been flashed to one minute sign, so it is very quick. It's what, how do we market and what do we do with Amazon, um, in, in particular Fire TV, but I just kind of started off in kind of a little mar marketing matrix. We have a lot of things at our disposal. This is where I get the laser pointer, but I can't get it to work, so I won't. Um, this is the cinemas. This is a million footfall a year. This is the, wet, the digital bit. That cross-promotion is huge. What we're allowed to do then with our distribution arm, we're able to then filter into all our various platforms. I kind of tried to visualize that in a very quick way. But we don't care about the other platforms here. We're talking about uh, our friends here at Amazon Fire TV. So what we're allowed to do and what we can do and offer something that really doesn't exist for anyone else in the market, and I'm going to throw Sky and Netflix in the world, they don't have this. They don't have this. So what we're able to do is cross-promote Fire TV and Fire TV and bring them into the film ecosystem, which no one else can do. So we work with big brands, regional brands, media partners, but we also work with Creative England, documentary film funds. And that's something really, really different that Fire TV has access to all of that audience. And again, I'm up for time, so I'm going to quickly show you the last slide. Oh, my, my images didn't load, but that's a pro no problem. But basically, these uh, buckets are about what we're able to do and what we're able to do in a very different way. Day in day theatrical releasing, actually, as opposed to here, of a very successful film we just done recently. And there's a, a digital marketing channels Twitter, Facebook, our CRM newsletter, our, our database from our customers, but also our loyal members who pay £1,000 a year, £300 a year, £50 a year to become a member of Curzon Cinemas. We market to them and we market to them with uh, Amazon TV. And also then down here, at our venues, you can see 
downstairs, the free film voucher, but a lot of the print collateral on displays and pre-rolls on the digital screens, every time we're showing Amazon Fire TV, we're our own brand. Um, this omitted pieces here, but this is the last bit. This is where we're offering extra value, and we're able to do that, which makes us stand out from the crowd. It's that film industry, that loyal, engaged audience, which is similar to a way in gaming. They like to come back, and they like to come back to watch film, maybe here, but then we can pull them through, and we can play with them on Fire TV. That's a very quick last two slides, but anyway, thank you very much. <laughs>